it's not a fun experience for me to be a scapegoat for me to like martyr myself all the time. But that's, you know, that is what I often do. Is um, that, is there some sense of um, specialness attached to that at all or? Yeah, I think so. I think there, there is. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Hello and welcome to the Fuck Suffering Podcast. I am your hostess, Ray Hance. And on this podcast, I provide an I Ching reading for our guests each week and then read from my own book, Oracle of Emergence and Evolutionary I Ching. And then we see what happens from there. Usually a pretty interesting conversation develops. This week, the conversation includes entitlement and responsibility. Why do we need to feel special? The need for roots, the longing for belonging, living in truth, welcoming everything, devotion, belonging, community, expanding our experience of love, and one of my favorite topics, non-orgasmic self-pleasure practice. Ooh, juicy. What is our guest's question for the I Ching this week? Where are my people? two questions today yes i've i've uh I, i've kind of made some marks on my questions they've morphed a little bit but we'll see oh, that's we'll perfect. See. yeah so i think i've got i've got those things here yeah so what's what's most alive for you today should i just should i just pick one of my questions and we'll start there yeah well, i mean which question is most alive let me let me uh let me let me reflect on that for a second yeah take a minute <clears throat> they're both really alive but there is one that's that feels more appropriate to to share first so that is where are the people that i am meant to be building community with where are they at I've been looking, can't seem to find them. Okay. Yeah. What kind of community are you looking to build? Good question. Maybe one that uh, one that doesn't exist yet. I don't know. I mean, that's a, that I could spend an hour answering that question. I don't know how to. I don't know how to give a shortened version. What's the urge? What's the urge feel like? Um. I mean, it's, 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 it's nothing special. It's just like, it's just belonging and, and, um, and, and a shared vision and, uh, devotion and, and devotion to, what? to, 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 to living, to living in truth, to expanding our, our experience of love and to welcoming all aspects of, humanity you know um what aren't you welcoming now what am i not welcoming mm -hmm. what am i not welcoming i don't know that that um I guess what I'm wondering is like, what's making this a future vision rather than a present vision? Well, uh, what, wait, what, what's, what's giving you the impression that it's a future vision? The, the nature of your question is still looking for people, for something outside of you to, to start manifesting this. And so I'm wondering what, why, why, why is it still feeling outside if we can, cause I, before we throw the coins and like cast the hexagrams, 
I kind of want to feel into it a little bit. Like, why is that? Why is it still external? What about it is still external? Um, yeah, I, I, I want to, I want to help you understand. I'm having trouble figuring out exactly how to fill in the gaps. Um, I mean, I have a belief that I, I need community, you know, I need other people to a certain degree. Um, so that's, you know, so there's something external about that. I can't, I can't just be a hermit. No. Know? So, so I need other people. So those other people are out there in the world. They're not inside here. Um, and I haven't found them. I've been looking, you know, I've, I've gone all over I've traveled the world and I've traveled all over the country and, uh, I've been really putting myself out there and, I have a really strong community of like-minded souls in my life, but they're all scattered and it doesn't seem like there's any momentum for all of us to like move to some plot of land together. And, and that's what I want. Like I want, I want close proximity with people that have a shared path that we can, we can be a source of fuel for each other on a regular basis. I don't have that. And, um, yeah, I've been looking, you know, um, looking everywhere. So, and I, and I, and it's like, there, there's a, there's, there's two communities. So I'm living in Maine currently. I think you know, you know that yeah. I found you're, you live in Maine too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I grew up in Maine and then I went to, went away to college. I lived in Minnesota for five years and then I lived in California for three years. And, and during that time, I also did tons of traveling internationally. Um, and I, so I've spent time in intentional communities and conscious communities, I've spent a lot of time in, in, in sort of like collective spaces that are doing the kind of thing that I want to be doing, but it always felt like this isn't the place, this, this isn't quite the place for me to do that. Like, this is a place for me to like come and enjoy Enjoy, like sit by the fire for a while and then go back out into my, you know, dark night until I find the one that's actually really going to be a place where I can set down roots and start to really dig in. And I just haven't found that. And so now I've moved home here to Maine and there are two communities that I've found here in this region, three, actually one, one here in Maine and two in New Hampshire, uh, Two of those communities, I feel after having spent time with them, I, I feel pretty at odds with um, in certain ways. And then the third, where I feel like there's some potential, it also feels like, well, I don't, it doesn't seem like there's a really strong invitation for me to like, to, 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 um, to join in a deeper way than just like, every couple of months we have some big gathering on the land where everybody, you know, comes for a weekend and camps and has all this fun together. And, and that's great. And I go to those events and I love them, but then I go home and then I'm, then I'm disconnected from community again, just to a certain degree. So, and it doesn't really feel like that community is necessarily the right one. It's like, I'm, I'm waiting for a signal of like, this is the place where we really want to invest and really want to like allow it to, to change the course of our life. You know, um, I haven't found that. So, and I feel restless. It's, it's a real longing for me and there's a lot of pain in that. So do you have a sense of belonging normally, like without that? I, Is you that know, I, I do I honestly. Yeah. Like I've really, really like dug into that in my life. I mean, my connection to, the earth is, is really, I mean, it's not, it's not as strong as it could be, but it's a real, like, like serious resource for me at a body level. I mean, I like the connection that I have to trees, to animals. Um, so yeah, I belong, I belong here on the earth. Like that's, that's a pretty, pretty firmly rooted, uh, reality for me now. Um, I belong 
you know, my, like I have, I have a sense of belonging in my family. I have a sense of belonging with the, the friends that I've made, uh, over the years that just, you know, live all over the world and, and there's no kind of shared group that we're a part of. Like, so there's a lot of pieces of belonging, but there's that core communal belonging, like in a place with a group of people that I'm really craving, um, that feels like it's continuing to elude me. And, um, I mean, I'm young and my hunger for it isn't going anywhere. So I, I expect that that'll show up at some point in my life. Um, I, so maybe the question is like, why isn't it showing Why hasn't it shown up yet? Like, is there, are, do I have more lessons to learn before it will show up? Like, That's is there more? What? That's interesting. What is? Do you have more lessons before that shows up? Do you feel like you do? Maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to, I'm willing to consider that that's why it's not here already. Cause I've to like, you know, I mean, yeah, because, uh, I know that I'm like, I know, I know that like the universe is looking out for me. Like that's something that I know. And so the fact that, that this deep need of mine that I know is going to be just good for humanity for everyone involved, for everyone connected to, to this, whatever this vision I have, uh, um, that it has, yeah, it's like, it's like, I know that what I, what my like soul is here for, like all of that is going to play out. Like, I'm not questioning that it's more like, I mean, sometimes I do, sometimes I do have moments of doubt, like doubting God's love for me kind of thing, you know, but for the most part, I feel like, no, my journey is pretty well, the, the, the way is paved. I just have to live my life and it'll happen. Um, but there are sometimes moments where I wonder, okay, is the thing that I really need not showing up yet? Because it's like, you know, spirit is telling me like, dude, you still got some shit in the way, you know, um, that you got to clear out before that's going to show up, you know? So Let's ask about that. What? Let's ask about that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's still in the way? What does your intuition say about that? Um, well, that's the thing I'm questioning is like, I don't know if there's anything in the way it. I mean, I, I am pretty good at like, alienating myself from uh-huh. group from, from from groups of people that could potentially be like a source of this thing, this thing that I'm, that I'm uh-huh. longing for. Um, so on the one hand, I could see that as like, well, I'm just really good at sabotaging myself. And like, there's obviously some part of me that's terrified of getting what I really want. And is just finding some clever way. Most people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe, maybe that's all, that's the only story that, makes sense here, but there's another one that I also am, am weighing, which is that like, I recognize myself as a very intense person, especially in community. Like I bring a lot of energy into community and not all of it feels safe for people in general. Like I I bring a lot of energy and I don't, I don't hide the parts of me that may make certain people feel very unsafe sometimes, you know, because I'm committed to building community with people that are, that are not going to uh, try to like shove any aspect of themselves into the shadow. Like I really want to see like how much can we be full spectrum human beings together and actually build something and not, and not hate each other's guts all the time and, and have this like community vision just like crumble and just be another example of a failed attempt to build something real. Uh, but so it's like, I also wonder if just like what I'm, what my, what I'm envisioning is just too much for most people. And so then it becomes a matter of like, I just need to meet more of my kind of intense people that are down for something. That's probably a lot more of an investment spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically than maybe most people are after when they think of like being part of a community and having potluck dinners and, 
having little cacao ceremonies and having something really peaceful and, and cozy and comfortable. To me, that's, that's only one side of community. And I, I see a lot of people kind of only living in that territory. And that to me feels like that's not really real. And so I often find myself alienating myself from those communities because I show up to be kind of an example of like the thing that everyone's ignoring in the room. Like I, I often find myself like embodying whatever people are rejecting in the collective space. And so that just makes it very intentionally? easy. Intentionally? Well, I mean, some part of me is doing it intentionally. I mean, I, 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 not all parts of me. I mean, I don't, I don't, it's not, it's not a fun experience for me to be a scapegoat for me to like martyr myself all the time, but that's, you know, that is what I often do. Is um, that, is there some sense of um, specialness attached to that at all or? Yeah, I think so. I think there, there is. Yeah. Yeah. It might be. That might, yeah. What's that? Thank you for being honest about that. Yeah. 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 No. And, and, and I'm actively questioning, like, <laughs> like it's, it's a real, <laughs> I mean, I know you said like, don't ask yes or no questions, but like, I might, I might just need a really hard truth from, from God that I'm not special, you know, um, like that might be enough for me, you know, you're not, I don't, <laughs> you're not special, but your presence is required. Well, that, yeah. So there's something, there's something about that. No, that's the thing is like, is like usually the message of you're not special also comes with, and you're not really needed here either. Oh no. I, that, that's why I think those two have to go together. You're not special, but your presence is required. Like we all have this note to sing in this magnificent choir and your presence is absolutely required, but I agree. I you know, agree. like that's really not that special. So, so then, so I guess we're, we're changing the definition of what special means. Cause I would agree with you then. And I don't think I'm more special than like, I don't know. It's, it's, it is a question that I'm like playing around with, but I definitely feel like, uh, yeah, there's something around, around. Yeah. Whenever I feel people saying like, Oh, you're not special to not just to me, but just in general, when someone wants to like reject that, it usually comes with this, with this energy of w without the second piece that you're naming. So I just think it's kind of rare. What you just, what you just shared is something that like very few people that I've met would say that like, you're not special and your presence, your existence fucking matters. Absolutely. Like, I haven't met a group of people who are willing to stand in a circle together and, and sing that song. And that's, that's what it's, I'm looking for. It's you a know, tough one know. to embody because it's, a, it is a bit paradoxical. Yeah. Well, because, yeah, because I think it, then it, then it actually makes everyone special. It's like, but then no one's special. Right. So it's like, so, so well, that's what I'm, think, I'm like, waffling it, it comes with a, a little less entitlement and a little more responsibility. Yeah. Well, and I think the entitlement, I mean, here I'm, I'm like, like somewhat, uh, some part of me is wanting to like defend defend myself. I, I think, like, <laughs> I think, the, I think the entitlement, the entitlement comes from like, how dare you people claim that, that my presence isn't necessary here. So if, if specialness and my existence being required go out the door together, then I'm going to fucking cling to specialness and I'm going to make it the most obnoxious thing in the world. Gotcha. That's what I have to do to hold on to my existence here fucking matters. Okay, so let's come back to your question of what's still in the way. Might it be related to that? <laughs> for, sure. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, <don't. laughs> so maybe we should go back to the original question because I think you just answered about what's still in the way. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, so where so where so where are those I don't know, is that where are, where are the people that you're meant to build community with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you yeah, have your yeah. three coins? Does I that do. does that does that feel like what what you still want to ask? Does that feel? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Let's take your three coins in your hands. Don't so much think about your question as feel your question in your hands. Let's take three, three deep breaths with a really, really long exhale. 
Let the, let the exhale be as long as you can make it. Let your energy come out of your head. Let it drop out of your head. Let's have it just drop out of your head, down the back of your throat, past your heart. Let's have it just settle in your belly. Settle right behind your belly button. Deep belly breaths with a super long exhale. Feeling that question in your hands. When you feel settled, settled in the belly, going to have you shake the coins gently and throw them six times. We're going to throw all three coins six times. And each time you're going to tell me how many heads and how many tails. Whenever you're ready. Two heads, one tails. Okay. Two heads, one tails. Three tails. Three heads. Three heads. Two tails, one heads. Well, this is interesting. You've got hexagram 12, the delta, going into hexagram 52, which is pause. So that's kind of in alignment with this idea that it's, it's not time yet, that there's a lot of replenishment actually, and a, and a sense of um, your own full depth that that's going to require you to enter that completely before you're really ready to step into that leadership. Yeah. Um, so 12 is, is a really interesting hexagram because sometimes it, it can feel like stagnation because it's, it's, it's a lot of yang lines over, over the, over the yin line. So it's heaven over earth pressing, pressing down. So it is like, it's like, uh, there's like a, A, con a concentration of the darkness of the underground forces of the earth of the of the underbelly of like a compression of the underbelly and that feminine space actually the delta is the fertile space where the river meets the sea a space of replenishing changed change nothing is forced in the delta but twice a day the tidal river flows backwards and this power changes the landscape Fu Shi, who first wrote down the I Ching, had only his sister consort Nua for company. They were alone in the world, so Nua made the rest of humanity out of clay, out of the earth. You are being called to notice how you emerge from the body of the earth, how your own hands are led to shape you. It is much the same way yin and yang lines come together to form the hexagrams. So that's really interesting that you're talking about, like, where are the people? And part of this hexagram is that original, like that 
primordial primordial couple like before like some of I don't know if you're familiar with Dogon cosmology as well there's like this primordial twin that comes into the world and like they create the rest of humanity out of clay so maybe what you're looking for is like doesn't exist yet but there needs to be patience in the emergence and a respect for the forces at play so the delta is where the river meets the sea. The vulva is where the womb meets the world. Meet yourself here in this rich soil. This is this is a, like a very feminine hexagram. So like the language is super feminine and, and like very female embodied. Um, this is a great time to start a self-pleasure practice if you don't already have one. Um, let erotic sensation permeate you. Hold the sensation of being fully alive, absolutely lit without it needing to stop. Our nervous systems grow stronger with a practice like this. I don't know. Do you do any recirculation, like non-orgasmic recirculation? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, I've just started exploring uh, non-orgasmic sex. Yeah. Because that that's, a, that's incredible for building nervous system capacity. Yeah. And for yeah. really developing a level of energetic agility where you can walk into a room then and not have this issue that you're talking about where sometimes you're too much for people because you will have that mastery over your own energy as to, and you'll be able to read the room. Yeah. And like have, have the, have the self mastery and an energetic agility for, for the leadership that it sounds like you're looking to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that kind of practice can be really beneficial for that. Um, cool. We're less likely to tip over into anxiety when we feel an energetic surge. Be as intimate with your pussy as you are with your heart and mind. Your genitals generate eros, life force energy. Expand your capacity to be fully alive. The delta envelops much. It's the homing signal made material. The delta invites you to discern when replenishment seeps into stagnation. When is it time to get up? Can you feel when the delta releases you? Can you wait until it does? There's no need to pathologize this phase, naming it misfortune. Ending it prematurely would be the misfortune. It's just large and dark and heavy and wet. Through gravity, we find grace. Pressure over time makes a diamond. Be the chunk of carbon you are. Feel the weight of the world transforming you. It might feel like you're being crushed. Give it time. Time is generous. There is plenty. The next moment is already here. Nothing here can be rushed. You can't claw your way out. The delta moves in its own way, in its own time. It shapes the land and follows the shape it has carved, like you do. It's time for you to be in this place, guided by the muck of the wetlands without judgment. You're learning what your body can hold and how to expand your capacity through knowing when to rest. Do you confuse replenishment and laziness? When you don't want to get out of bed, are you sure that you're depressed? Can you meet laziness with self-compassion? How about craziness? Can you love it? Can you show it the respect it deserves? Can you go deep down inside it with reverence? There's no need to judge yourself. You're in the space of feminine replenishment. Welcome it. The deeper you go into the delta, the more you clarify your spark. Everything else is mud. Your spark is not mud. It's clad in mud. In and out of this relationship with the delta, your essence is revealed and healed. You come to understand that your body is made of the earth, not separate. We don't go to nature, we are her. The dark feminine is calling you home. Don't run away, dive into the wet portal. Let the soft meet and metabolize the hard. No enlightenment without endarkenment. Feel the pulse of your spark in the dark. Be moved by that. So you have a couple of transforming lines here. So one is at line three of transforming lines at three, four, and five. So there is a lot of, um, there's a fair bit of flux between these two hexagrams. So this one Delta is your main, is the main message. Now what's enveloping that is hexagram 52, the pause. So there's a lot of stillness here. So like, instead of going out and actively seeking, seeking the people that you're looking for, there's, there's an undercurrent here of, of being so magnetic that you simply draw them, that it's not a matter of going out and like actively seeking people and trying to bring them in, but being more like a, like a peony, you know, nobody, the peony doesn't have to grab anybody by the back of the head and push your face into them. Like you want to put your face in a peony. Cause that's, it's, 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 it's very nature to be magnetic that way. Yeah. 
So you have lines at three, four, and five. Line three is you have an opportunity for atonement. Make amends. When you stop trying to manipulate and control and start being honest, everything will be easier. Remaining twisted in shame will only delay this urgent adjustment. Be gentle with yourself and others. Let people's positions be in alignment with their character. Don't ask someone to be who they're not, including you. That just brings suffering. Does anything in that land for you? Or is there some, someone you need to make amends to or atone to? Um, no, I mean, all, all of this, is, all, all of this is resonating. Um, as far as specifically atonement, um, I, I would not, I, no one comes to mind. I'm, I am really actively practicing self-compassion and, and like, I feel like I'm already, and I've, I've already started a, you know, non-orgasmic sex practice. So it's cool to, to hear that, like the, some of the suggestions I'm kind of already doing, maybe I could do more of. Um, yeah. Line four is emerging from the Delta back into the light. You've been restored by the cool Delta mud. You've listened well and now have some sense of the direction you're moving in. First, it's toward the light. Let yourself be seen. More will be revealed. And then line five is don't worry. Worry will deplete your energy. Consider coppicing. It's a pragmatic and sustainable approach to forestry. When you cut one down, many appear in its place. Birches are especially good at this. They bring their friends, the firs, along. They rebirth a logged forest this way. They feast on the new light available to them, even as they look like stumps. They are just stumps to our impoverished eyes. Most of the forest is underground. When you fret about the cutting of the one, you miss out on the many to come. Consider all options. Steward resources sensibly. Maintain a wide view and include what's underground. Cool. Yeah, this is this is um, really beautiful. So what? <sighs> this really stood out to me, considering what you were saying earlier. When you fret about the cutting of the one, you miss out on the many to come. Yeah, you know, I think I'm. I think that's another thing that I'm already practicing. Is like I'm. I, you know, maybe a couple months ago, I was, I was, um, I was concerned about my sort of cutting ties in a certain sense with one of these communities, um, mm -hmm. with, with some kind of like sense of scarcity, like, mm -hmm. well, there's, this is like one of the only ones around. So I'm going to like, you know, like, don't burn that bridge. right. Yeah. 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 And so, and, and I really have really like allowed myself to burn, to burn bridges, you know, and to let that be okay. And, um, trusting that there's more to come. So I, I feel like I'm already working that muscle. Um, I think it could be strengthened, um, in a lot of different areas, but, um, it's already, a lot of the stuff you're sharing is already in movement for me, which I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, um, pat myself on the back for that, that that must mean that I'm, <laughs> I'm doing some, doing, doing some good work. So. Yeah. So 52 is the pause. So that's the thing that's surrounding all of this. And that's like mountain over mountain in the trigrams. So there's a sense of, of, a really profound stillness, but of course the mountain is never really still, right? Find the stillness within without suffocating yourself. Still and supple, not still and stiff. Even the mountain is only pausing. Yeah. This is a time to notice where you're at and what you're being drawn toward next. Be still and notice. It's not the time to rush into the world with your full energetic belly like your hair is on fire. It's still <laughs> wet from the thunderstorm. Sit a spell and see where you're at. Sprout a root from your belly button to the center of the earth. That was interesting because like when I was, when we were just grounding before we started, usually I have people bring their energy all the way down to your, to their feet. But for you, it, it felt like belly, belly. Like I kept feeling like horror, like, you know, like that there's this, uh, that energy isn't landing there. Like yeah. it's not through there, but it's not really landing there. If that makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, and I can feel that. I mean, in in my like dancing, for example, um, I enjoy dancing and a lot. And I also it can sometimes feel really triggering and and disorienting and, and painful for me, and in part because I can feel that there's a disconnect between my upper body and my lower body mm-hmm. and that there isn't any like gravitational force, like density in my mm-hmm. belly where I feel like there should be. So I can mm-hmm. kind of sense, I can sense something missing there for me, something that hasn't rooted. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's something I've been aware of for a while. And um, I don't exactly know what's, you know, what, what, uh, if there's more I should be doing for that, but. Uh, you, have you done Qigong at all? Little, little bit. Yeah. It's kind of been on my radar. Yeah. Qigong is great for that. Yeah. yeah. Really great for that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Sprout a root from your belly button to the center of the earth and another from your tailbone and two more from the soles of your feet. Be just where you're at in this moment, storm wet and spent, but still fizzing. There's nowhere to go. Nothing to do right now. Pause and ground embody the calm after the storm. Allow yourself to be spacious rather than focus on being mindful. That thing is too full already. Notice how your mind overflows. Just notice, open more past your skin, beyond your body. Be still, soft and spacious. Meditate. Meditation is rooted spaciousness, not mindfulness. Soften your attention, melt. Melt like the wicked witch of the West melts. Water melts her. She's all dry, false, young fire, pushing, forcing, negating life, easily extinguished by yin. A mountain seems still, but is always shifting and softening under the influence of wind and wood and water and fire and abides this way for eons. Even a mountain is only ever pausing, no matter how eternal it appears to you in its stillness. Is your heart like a mountain? It's one thing to quiet the monkey mind or still the spine. It's quite another to restrain a frog heart as it leaps from your chest. Still your heart without suffocating it. Are you choking on your snuffed heart's acrid smoke? Pause right where you are. Stop, drop, and roll. Do you want to close when you're being called to open? Will closing really make you safer here or will stillness alone do a fine job? Notice. Notice the restriction and pause instead. See how that response unfolds inside you as more is revealed. Three days later, would you still respond the same way or has something shifted? How about one day? How is that landing for you in terms of the bridge burning? Um, Well, not as much about the bridge burning, but um, yeah, it's definitely landing. I mean, Yeah, there is, there is like a, um, resisting. Yeah. There, there, I definitely noticed something in me where there's moments of overwhelm or of too much exposure or something. And my instinct is to shut down, uh, because I feel like I haven't, I haven't learned the skill of, yeah, it's like, I don't know that stillness is an option of mm-hmm. like pause that pausing is an option. So it's either I have to keep going through and like, and just face this fucking train that's going to run me over or, um, completely jump off the tracks. And, um, I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing is that there's an option to pause, which is like, you don't have to do any, you don't have to do anything in this moment. Uh, and that gives you the freedom to not close prematurely to something that you might want to remain open to a little bit longer. So that that's definitely resonating for me just on a more general, like interpersonal level. Um, the spaciousness thing too. I have this, this um, lion image behind me and I think I, I chose it. it. Yeah. And I, and you know, I have a teacher who's actually saying a lot of the same things to me that this, what you were sharing, uh, that really what the the next skill that I really need to cultivate is spaciousness. Um, Mm. There's something missing for me there. And he was like, isn't it funny that you have this lion behind you that sort of embodies a kind of like visceral spaciousness, you know? Um, (laughs) 
And so I think I chose that for a reason because I recognize there's some, there's some quality that this guy exudes that's a part of his being that I really need more of, you know? And it's so, a crucial so. part of his power. And if you're talking about stepping into a leadership position of bringing a community together and being that, uh, being like the bridge that's making that happen, you're going to, you're going to need a certain amount of stability. No, you're right. And, and, and if pause isn't in your toolbox, it's going to be really hard to maintain that stability. Yeah, no, I mean, it is, yeah, thinking about the burning bridges for a second, it, it definitely is like um, my pattern has been like explode with my life force mm-hmm. and and risk, risk, you know, burning bridges as, as just one risk. There's a lot of risks involved in that um, or like shut it down. And uh, so, yeah, I have it's like there'd be so many more possibilities for me if I could learn to give myself a pause in those moments where I feel like it's a binary choice. It's either I just overwhelm everyone with me or I like collapse me into a little ball, you know, the confluence with a non-orgasmic erotic practice is going to be huge for that. Yeah. Cool. That, that nervous system nuance is, there is truly no better way to develop that. So, I mean, so, I, mean I just, I just want to like reflect out loud how cool it is that like I've been on this journey with sexual addiction for, you know, since I was like 12 mm-hmm. and been, like just incredibly addicted to orgasms. Uh, and just in this last six months, I've decided to, end my addiction to orgasms. And I literally started reading about Caretza and, and, uh, you know, Eastern approaches to sex. And I now have a partner who's willing to explore that with me. And we just had our first experience of non-orgasmic sex a week ago. And we were both anticipating that it was going to feel boring, that it was going to be like, feel unnatural. And it was God, like, whole new field. Whole yeah, I, was like, I was like, this is, this is better than MDMA. I was like, this is fucking amazing. So I'm, Although I'm there are really, similarities. There are similarities. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just, what I'm really wanting to appreciate for myself right now, just to kind of like um, celebrate is that like intuitively mm. I, I knew that like, okay, this next stage of my life, like I need to learn this shit. And I kind of just knew that like changing my relationship to sex was going to be an essential, like a core part of that. So I'm just really feeling like my intuition and my direction is being really validated by. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, that is in a way it's like burning the bridge inside and out. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. Uh-huh. when a lot of, when a lot of that life force starts to get squandered in especially like masturbatory orgasms, it's very, it's hard. It's hard to like get that life force back and be able to direct it in a way, in a way that's of greater benefit and of broader benefit. Yeah. Yeah. When there's so, there's so much power there. Mm -hmm. There's Mm -hmm. so much power there. And it's so interesting that this is what you're getting, that there is like this, um, like this sense of taking all that energy and, and, a, and, and being with it and feel like feeling that, like that feeling when you think you might crawl out of your skin. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And like taking that to the edge of what you find bearable. Yeah. And just noticing, Oh, this is almost unbearable. <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> and like feeling your nervous system expand we are like, okay, well, I thought that was unbearable, but now that I'm at the bottom of it, I'm realizing how buoyant I actually am. Yeah. Yeah. Like that actually wasn't unbearable. Uh Yeah. I mean, that's, and that's the big thing. There's so many moments where my, my nervous system gets activated to trigger this, like, this is overwhelming. We have to shut it down. And it's actually, it's very hard to to just yeah, exactly. Just or, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. One, one of the two. And it's, um, it's very hard to override that. And so I, I'm also hoping that this new way of engaging with sexuality is gonna, is gonna, um, bring, bring me some more skills and some more yeah. nuance and subtlety there. Cause I, I've been really lacking in that subtle capacity to find an in-between between those mm-hmm. two polar opposites, you know, and arrows so, is life force. 
you know, so the yeah. more you're able to hold, to hold that and let it run yeah. without needing to discharge it, like yeah. the more, the more powerful you become. Right. Right. And the no, more, it, you, it, it the makes, more you go into your leadership. Right. And it makes total sense to me why it's like, I kind of knew, I kind of knew that coming into this. It's like, yeah, of course, of course the community that I'm meant to like, you know, dig my roots in with, uh, is not, you know, knocking on my door right now because I, I'm not yet, I'm not, I'm not a vessel for that myself yet. You know, I'm on my way. Right. Um, but I'm not, there's like obviously a lot more for me to do to actually begin to, as you said, um, kind of magnetically bring that, bring that towards me. So yeah, yeah. This is all very helpful. Right. Cause it, it's like, you will ultimately lead by following by following your own life force, by yeah. following that beacon, like yeah. by learning yeah. how to, sur- to surrender to the pause and like to, to have equal agility in that masculine and feminine energy within you to have that inner Hieros Gamos where you have total mastery mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that you can bring that to any, to any situation. That's when community will come to you. You're not going to have to go out and look for it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes that all makes sense. And in some in some ways, that should be like the test of leadership. If you have yeah. to go out looking for followers, you're probably not ready. <laughs> well, sure. Well, I mean, I mean, it's interesting that you keep mentioning leadership because I mean, maybe that's how this sounds to you. But there's a part of me that's been so fucking hungry to belong to a tribe, you know, for my whole life. That like, on some level, it's not even about me being a leader necessarily having some grand vision for a community. It's just about like, it's just, it's just about like being a, being a part of uh, a tribe, you know? Um, so I don't, I, I don't mean, I don't mean leadership in a hierarchical way. Okay. I mean, leadership of your own life force because you are like to go back to this thing of you are not special, but you are required. Yeah. So yeah. that, that leadership, that's the, I mean, more like the leadership of self mastery. Yeah. Yeah. You are showing up as, as the master of yourself so that you can fulfill your, your role in the ecosystem to the best of your ability and without egoic interference. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I I, I mean, I love, I love that, that definition of um, leadership. Yeah. That, 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 that jives. Yeah. Like if yeah. we're all coming from a place of self mastery, then we can't help but be embedded in and co-creators of a healthy ecosystem. Yeah. Be totally. the ecosystem like specific well, community or the broader ecosystem. Yeah. And you know, honestly, there's something really relieving about um, orienting to, to this from the perspective that like I, I step into that kind of like self contained leadership by following my own. Absolutely. As so it's like, cause there's something it's like, it takes, it takes some of the, the, the load or the burden off, you know, to like, to be able to recognize, like, I actually, I don't need to be the one doing all the things. I just need to follow the thread, you know? Yes. Yeah. You need to trust that emergence. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like as the Buddha said, be a, be a lamp unto yourself. Well, and yeah, and I think that's, it's like, I've, 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 um, I was talking to some friends the other day who are dancers and like contact improv people. And, um, and I've never been able to really meet them in that space. Like when I was living in the Bay area, I would, I'd go to ecstatic dance all the time. I'd go to these contact improv jams and like all my friends were like super adept at it. And like, they know how to just let the body like be its own kind of emergent leader. Right. And so they're not, they're not preoccupied about like, Oh, am I too close to this person? Did I touch them on the shoulder in the wrong way? Whatever. (laughs) But like for me, for me, it's like, I'm paralyzed by that kind of, um, doubting. And it's like really doubting the wisdom and the intelligence and the trustworthiness of my own life force, you know? And I mean, there's so many ways that that we as human beings have been conditioned, but in a particular way that I think that I think men have been conditioned Absolutely. in this culture Absolutely. to, to distrust. Right. So Absolutely. it's like, I've had, I've had to unwind that in my sex life. And so mm-hmm. it's like a very, it's a very, um, large, 
task. And, and, uh, but this is, I, I'm really appreciating what this is stirring up for me there. Yeah. Cause there, I mean, there is, there is a certain amount of like feminine receptivity in that and just allowing life in. Right. right, you know right. I mean, that it's not just about going out and penetrating the world, right, but actually right. allowing yourself to be permeated before you go out penetrating, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. You know there's, a, there's a surrender. Yeah. 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 And, the, and, and it is a spaciousness and a permeability. Yeah. So I don't even, I, I don't necessarily want to call it even like a softness so much as it is a permeability. Yeah. 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 No, I feel that. Yeah. So the, the last paragraph of this is 24 hours can change everything several times. Give it all to the fertile pause. Allow this moment to move through you. Moderate how you release your life force into the stream of causes and conditions. Put a nice big filter on what's coming in and going out. Notice the debris it catches. Don't suffocate yourself, but filter and modulate. A skillfully regulated nervous system is the order of the day. Be where your feet are. Yeah. Yeah, all of this is coming back to nervous system regulation, which is, you know, obviously for most, for almost everybody, we could all use a little work on that. But that's yeah. really like the theme that keeps repeating here, like even in yeah. that before we even threw the coins and then with the coins or with the I Ching is bringing in is that that grounding, that spaciousness, that opening yourself to that, to the primal forces without reacting to them, without needing to like, by truly following that. I mean, I, that's, I love that you're talking about contact improv too. <laughs> like, that would be such an interesting, like Qigong, contact improv, ecstatic dance, like all of these modalities, even like a five rhythms class, even something like that. Yeah. That's just out, like just out of your comfort zone. Yeah, another a friend of mine was also suggesting I, I um, explore jujitsu as well as another another way of, of yeah. There's something about the body to body exchange of 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 life force energy outside yeah. of outside of the sexual domain because that's, right. that's really the only domain where I feel most comfortable with that. Um, so yeah, there's so many so many um, different ways to to deepen my learning there. Yeah. And I think discerning, discerning that difference between sexuality and Eros, like that nuance Mm -hmm. of like that exchange of life force, that sexuality is one expression of Eros, but like jujitsu, Qigong, ecstatic dance, like those are other points on that spectrum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, that all have a, that, that all have a, an important place in your toolbox in terms of embodied energetic exchange. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, how exciting. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So do, do you feel like that pretty much answered your question? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Right. Great. Well, fantastic. It was, it was so wonderful to read for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you so much yeah, for thank you so much. And I'm I'm really I'm super enjoying that lion behind you. <laughs> yeah, I this I is where I, I I do uh, mental health counseling and and it's uh-huh. all virtual. So this is my my therapist seat. So I've got he's he's my he's my my spirit animal ally that I bring with me into my sessions with people. Well, because he's so wonderfully liminal. Yeah, yeah you know he's yeah. like there and he's not. He's like emerging and receding all at the same time it's so delicious <laughs> yeah, my, my teacher was like if you could just like sit at the foot of that frame and just stare at it for a couple hours a day that could be your spiritual practice you know <laughs> that would be a great pause <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. well thank you so much for sharing your yourself with me tonight i really appreciate it yeah thank you for for inviting myself out this has been yeah. really, really- <laughs> grateful yeah thank you so much for joining us on the fuck suffering podcast with me your hostess ray hans if you'd like to be a guest on the podcast uh come to rayhance.com r-e-i-h-a-n-c-e and send us a message if you're interested in the book 
that I use to do readings on this podcast. It's called Oracle of Emergence and Evolutionary I Ching. That's my book, and it's available on Amazon. If you would love to help us grow our audience, because you enjoyed the podcast so much, rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. And in the meantime, God, we really can't fuck suffering until we trust suffering. And in a wild existential kink, we are all in that together. Till next time. Bye.